Tonight, we visit a family in Leeds. I was petrified, absolutely petrified. I could see somebody stood there. They fear their home is haunted. I was rudely awakened by a violent shaking. That really put me on edge. What else will it do in the future? The next thing could be quite serious. We send in our experts. Psychic Mia Dolan is shocked by what she finds. Oh, God. We're going down into a pit. What's that? What will they discover in the cellar? No, I'm just feeling very uneasy, actually, as if someone's watching us. I've just been poked. I've been poked in the side. Will Mia succeed on the toughest challenge yet? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, 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 oh! Britain is the most ghostly country in the world, with more than 10,000 haunted locations. But 45% of us say that if the ghost was in our house, we would stay stubbornly put. Clearly, we're a nation that's not easily frightened. Tonight, we investigate a cottage outside Leeds, whose owners say they're being haunted by a ghost that's becoming increasingly malicious towards them, a spirit that actually wants to cause them physical harm. Theresa Hassett, a customer service operator, Phil Hassett, a train supervisor, and daughter Pippa love their family home in Yorkshire. But they claim they've been terrorised by hauntings for years. I've lived in this house for nearly 20 years, I think it is. It's about 350 years old. From what I know, it used to be a coaching inn. We actually bought it without even seeing the house inside. It came on the market on a Friday afternoon and we bought it on a Friday afternoon. I don't know what it was about the house that drew me to it. I just felt that I had to live in this house. Even before they'd unpacked, Teresa says she started to experience things. I sat in the dining room and I could hear noises coming from the fireplace. At first I thought it sounded like children talking outside in the garden. I did actually get up and go outside to see if there was anybody there, but there wasn't anybody there. And that was just the beginning. Teresa believes she continued to hear voices coming from the fireplace. One night in particular, I can remember I was sat there with Phil and he made a remark like, there's bloody kids outside. And I heard voices which I thought were coming from the garden of uh, children. I went out there to investigate and there's absolutely nobody about. She often hears different voices, but it sort of confirmed it when I heard them and then both my daughters have heard the voices as well. Seemingly, their two daughters have grown up experiencing the presence in the house. I sat in the house one night on my own, um, assumed my sister was upstairs in the bedroom listening to music, and I heard someone walk across the landing. So I shouted up. I heard someone go back across the hallway, shouted up again, and I thought, maybe she's just ignoring me. Went upstairs, there was nobody in. But I heard somebody walk across that landing twice. I was petrified, absolutely petrified. Every noise after that, even just the wind, I was jumping, looking what it was. One room in the house has always had a macabre feel to it. There's a cellar in the house. It just feels as like a penetrating cold coming up from the well all the time. Even when you put heaters down there, it doesn't rise one degree. It's a, it's a very unusual room. Is it just the cold, or is there something more sinister emanating from the eerie cellar? The strangest thing about the cellar is we've always had dogs up until last year, all our married life. And every single dog that we've ever had will not go down in our cellar for whatever reason. Even to the point where I've picked one of the dogs up and tried to carry it, and it's actually struggled out my arms and tried to bite me to get away from the cellar. They say they're not only haunted by footsteps and voices. I've actually been sat in the living room in there when the door has opened and it's walked in, just a black shadow. I definitely think it is a male that I feel the presence of or sees in the room. I get the impression that it's wearing like a long cloak and it's hair, it's got long hair. I think it's actually trying to tell us something, but I don't know what. And because I don't understand what it's up to, it is starting to scare me. It appears that this figure is trying to communicate with Teresa Hassett. I'm quite sure that there's something there that is not particularly happy with me in general. 
and there's a lot of incidents that seem directly related to things that I do or when I'm here. They seem increasingly worried as they fear the ghost is trying to hurt Phil. And as I walked from the stairs into the front room, the picture, which is fastened up on the wall on the stairs, dropped from the wall like a guillotine and bounced off the stairs. It was as if somebody had just lifted it up off the wall and dropped it down. If it had hit it on the head, it would have killed him. There's no doubt about it. The Hassids say that after 20 years of hauntings, they've had enough. I went to bed as normal, went to sleep, and then I was rudely awakened about 2 o'clock in the morning by a violent shaking. I leapt out of bed and I saw a figure of a man. The looming figure was said to quickly disappear. To be physically shuffled about in bed, that really uh, put me on edge. Mm. And that's still something that I'm having trouble getting my head around as to why it's escalated up or moved up another stage now. We gave the Hassets a camera for the week in an attempt to find out what's happening in the house and how it's affecting them. Over the last week, there's been quite a lot of activity in the house. I've heard the voices downstairs by the fireplace. I've had the footsteps on the landing. I've also had the noise from this bedroom. When you're downstairs, it sounds like a small animal jumping off the bed. The shadow across the top of the stairs and the, the dining room door bursting open when there's no wind. It's got to the point now where these things are happening more and more and more, and it's upsetting uh, Theresa, my wife. I'm getting quite worried because it now seems to be attaching itself more and more to Phil, and I'm worried that eventually it will cause him more harm. After 20 years of hauntings, the Hassets say they're at breaking point. You can hardly blame Phil and Teresa Hassett for being frightened to live in their own home. Teresa is convinced that a malevolent spirit is actually trying to cause Phil physical harm. Well, they've called in the Haunted Homes team for help, but they are very worried about what our experts might uncover. Mia Dolan, one of Britain's most sought-after psychics, heads up the team. A psychic is somebody who covers all areas of paranormal. It's a paranormal consultant. There is no area that I don't work or don't touch on. I work with missing people. I work with people who are bereaved, people who are scared. It even goes into commercial work involved in the hiring of people in key personnel places. You get so many calls and people think they've got hauntings. Probably 70 to 80% haven't got a ghost. And then just occasionally, you get a live one. You shouldn't be scared of ghosts. Be cautious. But if it's a bad ghost, they can infect you. They can break you down, they can make you ill. You need help. Some of the activity that indicates you've got a haunting is extreme temperature changes, smells that come from nowhere overpowering and then go again, lights and orbs that have no logical explanation, bangs and noises that don't make sense, and of course, if you see a ghost in the room. People say to me, oh, I think it's haunted, but if it's a child, I'll keep it because I'm not scared of a child, or I'm not scared if it's not a bad one. It's not a dog, and if somebody is stuck, on Earth, they need to go home. So no, you cannot live with a ghost. They are not part of the furniture and fittings. If Mia decides that a home is haunted, she'll attempt to remove the ghost through a clearing process. My job is to pull the spirit in. I act as if, like a magnet, so I drag it to me and hold it. It's actually my guide that takes it over. A guide is a guardian angel, or whatever name you want to give it, everyone's got one. Mine's called Eric. It's Eric that opens a door to the other side. One of the techniques Mia uses is a spiritual practice called psychometry. Psychometry is picking up information from objects. If somebody's held something a lot or used something or worn something, then that's going to, it's going to soak up the vibe anyway. Mia studies the family's most cherished belongings to get more information about the owners. It's a great way to get a feel of a property you're going to. It's like the first clues. A horse brass. The first image that I get with this is um, a really old fireplace with old bricks set back. It feels quite heavy, actually. A bit oppressive. Now, an ornament 
And the first image I'm getting with this is if you can see the breath in the air where it's so cold. Still cold inside, though, in, inside a house, which is not a good thing to see. And, and once again, that heaviness. There are two main objects here that work, like the horse brass and the ornament. And that signifies cold, heaviness, oppression. Looks interesting. Within moments of touching the Hassett's possession, psychic Mia Dolan claims that she picked up on an oppressive presence surrounding the objects. Psychics believe they have a sensitivity that in theory we're all born with, but few of us bother to develop. Mia is now convinced that there's an ominous presence in the family's home that needs to be got rid of quickly for their own safety. She's now determined to visit the house to help remove this black atmosphere. Mia arrives at Phil and Teresa Hassett's home. Apart from the psychometry, she has no prior knowledge of the house, the location, or the family themselves. It's cold. It's like bone cold. It's ominous. It's heavy. In the front room, Mia says she picks up on numerous paranormal sensations. Normally when it's ominous and heavy, you just... you don't get the cold, and yet you've got, you got all of it. It's like ice fingers going through your bones, like through your limbs. On her walk through the house, Mia recognises poignant objects from the psychometry. Long time family's been in this place. This is where I picked up the horse brass from. I remember saying when I held the horse brass earlier that, that I could see bricks and the fireplace. People sitting in this room, temperature changes, it gets really cold and you can hear footsteps and the doors are opening on their own. It's like the door handle, the creak of the door handle and the stairs, footsteps going up the stairs, but also footsteps in the room as if right next to you. Mia makes her way up to the master bedroom. This room is very active. And then even this bed may move as if there's shaking, a trembling going on. Has she picked up on Phil's most recent terrifying experience of a man shaking him in bed? Someone's been very scared in this room. Mia is drawn downstairs to the cellar, where she senses things are about to get worse. Oh, God. I'm going down into a pit. It makes me feel physically unwell. It's very ominous. It's, it's... It's death. It's so cold. It feels it should be bigger than this. It's as if... It was bigger than this. This cellar, which I don't understand. People have been dead in here. And I don't mean ghosts, someone about dead have been laid here. Blood down here. Let's get out, God. Maybe much quicker I can get out of it, I can go down there. Mia appears to be overwhelmed by the cellar. Oh, it's awful, awful. It's not a great feeling down there. I feel really awful, yeah, awful. For Mia, touring the house has been a traumatic experience. What will the other experts make of it? Mia is accompanied by our very own paranormal investigator, Mark Webb. I became a paranormal investigator back in 1996 and over nine years my fascination hasn't dwindled at all. Paranormal investigators will go to reputedly haunted locations and try to capture some form of proof of the existence of the paranormal. Skeptic Chris French, professor of paranormal psychology, will look for a rational explanation. I actually used to be a believer in the paranormal, quite a strong believer. And over the years, the reason I've become more skeptical is because I've learned more and more about human psychology and the ways in which we can actually fool ourselves, the way we misremember, the way that we all tend to perceive things the way we want them to be. And it's as I've come to appreciate the way that that operates that I think that that provides probably a better explanation for allegedly paranormal activity. Our experts will be involved in a vigil at the family's home. In this, Mark will use various techniques to detect the presence of a spirit. 
On a paranormal investigation, we tend to do all different experiments. We'll use trigger objects, which are items which we will place onto a piece of paper. We draw around them. Obviously, it's in a room that's locked. No one else is allowed in there. And if we get any movement from those, that would indicate to us that either you've got a very strong draft, which we can actually measure, or something paranormal could have occurred in that area. No paranormal investigator is complete without an artillery of detection equipment. A motion sensor is a pair of devices that we will place facing each other. They then send a, an infrared beam, and if anything then breaks that beam between the two, it will activate an audio alarm. A mini disc recorder, paranormal investigators use these to try and capture EVP, or electronic voice phenomena. Thomas Edison actually said that you could capture the voices of ghosts on tape. Um, and basically it's been used by numerous paranormal investigators to try and capture something that the human ear can't hear. Thermometers or digital thermometers are all used by paranormal investigators. This is because it's claimed that when a spirit is present, the temperature will actually drop. So we do tend to use thermometers in locations to try and pick up on these big fluctuations in temperature. Chris has his own very important role to play. I see my role at the vigils as being twofold. First of all, if there was any possibility of some kind of genuine paranormal activity, then I really want to be in there, I want to witness it, I want to be able to say that I've seen that with my own eyes and that we've recorded stuff on camera, and, and that would all be incredibly exciting. My secondary role will be to actually look at the way that the other people who are involved in the vigil actually interact with each other. A lot of the kind of experiences that are going to be reported will be down to suggestions. Basically, people kind of getting each other psyched up. And it'll be interesting to see if that is what actually does happen. Mark believes having a sceptic on board will be beneficial to the investigation. There are sceptics out there who are completely closed-minded. No matter what proof we get, it's not paranormal. They will find any sort of rational explanation to fit the bill. There are certain sceptics out there, which Chris is one of those, who will listen to what you have to say, he will take it on board, and if he doesn't know what it is, he will say he doesn't know what it is. If we could actually prove that paranormal forces really did exist, that would be such a fantastic scientific breakthrough and, and, and such a kind of a contribution to human knowledge and, and helping us to understand our place in the universe and all those big issues, it would be absolutely fantastic. The problem is the evidence just isn't particularly convincing at the moment. What will the experts make of the Hassett's house? Phil describes for the experts some of the unusual occurrences they've experienced in the living room. But quite often when we sat down watching TV of an evening or having a chat, that door will suddenly spring open and we've seen quite a few dark shadows that sort of looks male-like in appearance. That's he also point. mentions the horse brass, which was of particular interest to Mia. In this fireplace, um, a couple of weeks ago, we were just sat talking, and that door was closed, um, all the other doors were closed, and that horse brass started spinning, rotating, in a clockwise direction, which we thought was rather odd, and the, the chimney is actually sealed at the top, so no drafts can come down there. After an intriguing list of anecdotes from Phil, the experts then joined Teresa in the bedroom. In the last couple of months, we've had quite a frightening experience each. However, over the years, many, many times I have woken up and where you're stood at the moment, there is a shadow stood there intently staring at me. What does it look like? Does it look like a, a human figure or what, what shape is it? It's just an outline, but there's no facial features or anything like that. Obviously, the interaction that they've had uh, in the bedroom would suggest that it wasn't sleep paralysis. Obviously, Therese has given us a story that she's actually spoken to this and it may have spoken back to her. Um, so I'm very interested in that bedroom upstairs. Phil takes them down to the cellar. Will Mark and Chris pick up on any of the feelings that Mia experienced? You're actually stood on water now, uh, underneath these flags. There's a very old well. It goes down about 10 foot, 15 foot. The Hassets have had a fascination with the well for many years. As part of our sort of investigating the background of the house, this well was quite um, an unusual item in any sort of house these days. And um, a friend who I taught to dive, He's a, a cave diver now, and we got him fully kitted up, and we got him actually inside the well. Phil explains the discovery to Mark and Chris. He got to the bottom, and when he moved some of the stones, he found um, a stone archway about 18 inches high, 
and that runs in that direction. But we were on uh, a rope tether with him for safety, and we ran out of rope, and we know he'd gone past that wall, and uh, we had to signal him at the end to come back. But I've never explored it further, and we can't explain why there should be another chamber inside a well that's full of water. And uh, have any kind of weird things happened down Not here? Not to me cellar? personally. Um, the only thing that's really strange, like I mentioned before, the dogs, we've always had dogs in this house up until uh, last year, and we've never, ever been able to get a dog to come down the cellar. Down here in this cellar, I'm getting an uneasy feeling. Maybe we, we can come up with a logical explanation as to what it is, but you never know. Now that the experts have had a chance to look around the house, it's time for Mia to meet the family. With daughter Pippa by their side for support, the Hassets are anxious to hear what Mia has found out about their home. There's a, I had a very strong image actually to do with this fireplace and, and this room. Um, one was the, the horse brass by the fire. Um, and I could, before when I was doing the psychometry, and I could see in my mind the, the bricks in the fireplace and the horse brass and everything else. But I also saw a man's hand with a skin sore on the back of the hand. I'm afraid you're the only man, so I'm hoping this has already happened to you. The Hassets don't recall this injury, but they do believe the fireplace and horse brass are key elements in the hauntings. Very strong image that this hasn't always been a house as if it's been used for something else a long time ago. What was the house before it was a home? Originally, it was a coaching inn. The yeah. barrels? Yeah. Yes. I've got barrels in the kitchen. Yeah. The stables. And lots of people coming in. Yeah. We, oh. hear vo we hear voices here. Yeah, lots of voices in this room, particularly. Like a party? Yes. yes. Yeah. So you know mm. when you overhear yeah. a party next door? That's exactly yeah. how I describe it. What's happening in that situation is like a dimensional wall weakens, and so you are hearing spirits from the other side but they're not actually in your room. Mm -hmm. And we've got something left over here from a long time ago. Somebody in a uniform, but not, not an army officer. It's a strange uniform. The Hassets don't understand this. Could it be the man who's haunting them? And I had the feeling of, I know it sounds really heavy, but bodies and death. Despite knowing the history of the house, these details are a shocking revelation to them. And the cellar, I had a strong feeling it should have been bigger. Yes. It's, it's, it's not its real size. There's two houses. It was one big house, but it's now been made into two houses. Oh, so in, the, in its day it would have gone along? I think yeah. so, yeah. Mia ends their chat on a lighter note and tells the family about a special spirit visitor. I get a very strong feeling of a sheep dog or a small dog in and out of people's feet, but this dog would be in spirit, but would come back. But that's a nice feeling, that's not bad. Sorry, you're going to upset me. <laughs> Sorry, but that's, that's a really nice feeling. The Hassets think that Mia has been spot on with her findings. It's a dog that we used to have called Horrible. Uh, she was an old English sheepdog, a very, very affectionate animal, and we all adored her, and she died about three or four years ago. She's left a big hole in our hearts. OK, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Looking forward to it. You're nice and normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm just quite overwhelmed, actually, with what she said. Uh, a couple of things that she said brought a tear to my eye because I didn't... I did realise they were there, but I didn't realise that she f would pick it up. It's just absolutely unbelievable what she said. And when she said she wasn't happy about going down the cellar, it wasn't actually a shock um, from incidents that have happened in the past. A lot of people don't like going in the cellar. I'm quite curious to see if there's anything down there. Teresa is in constant fear for her husband Phil's safety. But now that all the background information is known about the house and the family, our three experts, along with the Hassets, are ready to take part in an all-night vigil in the house to try and detect any spirit activity. Our psychic, Mia Dolan, says that if ghosts do present themselves, she'll be able to find out if their intent is good or evil. It's 11pm on the night of the vigil. Mark sets up his paranormal detection equipment around the house. OK, in this front room, we've decided to set up some activation objects. We've chosen two items from around the house. We're going to place them onto this piece of paper on this table here. We're going to seal the room off, and hopefully, when we come back in at the end of the vigil, we will have some sort of movement on these items. In the cellar, a thermal imaging camera has been set up, which will record any temperature fluctuations. Some believe this can indicate paranormal activity. It's nearly midnight, and in the Winnebago, sceptic Chris will study the vigil closely on the monitor. 
We'll position static cameras in the dining room, in the cellar, and in the front room. OK, so we're at the vigil. And for the first part, we're going to just let the house settle and see what we feel and what we hear. OK? Mm -hmm. OK, light's going to go out. After ten minutes, Mia decides to take Mark upstairs to examine the master bedroom. Okay. Oh, go upstairs, have a look. Yeah. She does have an ulterior motive. She wants to leave Phil and Teresa alone to see if the ghost will communicate with them. Ready? Yeah. Soon after, noises seem to start emanating from the fireplace. While waiting in the master bedroom, Mark takes the opportunity to mention to Mia his apprehension about the cellar. We went down in the, into the cellar, but it felt very heavy, very oppressive. It didn't feel like we should be down there. I'm not looking forward to the cellar. No. Phil believes he is seeing steam radiating from the fireplace. Not that far, it's like... Over here, it's got smoke in it. At the same time, Mark says he's beginning to see things upstairs. I thought I saw, like, a... someone sort of peer around the door and then stick their head back. Phil and Teresa claim they've often seen shadows in this room. But certainly, I, I'm, I'm sure I saw something sort of... Movement around it. Yeah. Can you still see it? Yeah. What is it like, a smoke? It's like, um, steam. No, yeah, I think. Yeah. Shimmer it. Unsure of what Mark has witnessed, Mia and Mark return to the living room, and the news that tonight's activity has definitely begun for the Hassets. Okay. Oh, seen steam or smoke over there on the floor. It was shimmering like you see a mirage in you know, the desert. Yeah. That sort of thing. Or steam. Mia believes steam is often associated with paranormal activity. But then that's completely sealed. We don't think there's any bird's nests or... Oh, there's no bird's no, nests? No, because there's um, stone flags at the top, so there's no way they can get no. in. No birds can get in, no. Then, suddenly, unexplained noises start coming from the sealed room. What was that bang from? Yeah. Like someone opened the door. You get it pulse darker. Meanwhile, in the cellar, the locked-off camera starts to pick up some noises. Mark and Mia decide to go down to investigate. Strange size steps. Mark says he's been dreading returning to this room. Lights better go out, OK? Yeah. The cellar is now pitch black and very disorientating. You right? Yeah, 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 it's like that wobbly thing. The dark should heighten their other senses. Mark immediately reports hearing a noise up the stairs. But I've heard, you know, if you'd stop walking, you'd sort of... Yeah. That's what I've heard there. <laughs> Someone's got to the bottom of the stairs and just stopped. The sense of presence by the stairs is said to get stronger. You can hear it right behind you, Mark. I know. I don't... It's shuffling. I'm stood here and I just don't want to look behind me. <laughs> Strange noises begin to infiltrate the cellar. I'm hearing, it's like bits of the wall flaking off. Where are you pointing? <laughs> well, it's, it's to the wall to our right. Oh, God. It's so dark. I don't know if it, it could be some sort of drip. Some sort it's of... not only in the cellar that the dripping noise can be heard. You hear a noise, like a drip. Many of the noises seem to be coming from the sealed room above. That's floorboards above us. That's the room above us. That's creaking floorboards. There's, there's no one in there. But that's what it, that's what the noise is. It's, it's been locked off. 
the team report the activity is starting to intensify. Oh, oh Mark, I just had someone breathing in my ear. Fucking. <laughs> Mark and Mia look completely on edge. As the Hassets have reported in the past, the haunting gets physical. Jenny! I've just been poked. You were where? I've just been poked in the side. Show me your side, show me your side. I don't know if there's anything there. Yeah, yeah, they've got Mark. After 40 minutes in the cellar, the haunting seems so intense that Mia is sure that the spirit is trying to communicate with them. Mia is keen for Teresa to come down to the cellar, as she says the spirits communicated with her in the past. I think that you and I, Teresa, should go downstairs into the cellar. OK. And I think Phil should go to the Winnie Baker of Mark and watch it on the monitor. At 2 a.m., they all take up their new positions. Like Mark, Teresa reports a strong sense of presence by the stairs. I'm just feeling very uneasy, actually, as if someone's watching us. Yeah. He's behind us. Yeah. Stay away. The cellar feels even more intense to Mia this time, and they're starting to pick up a different noise. It sounds like an animal. What's that? They say they can't make out what the sound is, but it's getting closer and louder. Disorientated in the pitch black, they look for the well to steady themselves. Don't you go and leave me. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's gone so, so dark down here now. Oh, it's horrid. The tension is mounting. Teresa is terrified by the bang, so they leave. It's only later that they realise that Teresa's torch had fallen to the floor. After tonight's dramatic events, it's time for our sceptic to take a look. I'm probably in the right kind of frame of mind to experience anything if I'm going to, cos I'm actually feeling extremely tired, and so, therefore, I ought to be suggestible if it's all down to suggestibility, or if it's all really happening, then I ought to hear it anyway. So I'm just going to stand here for a while, quite a while, and just see how I feel, basically. Mia and Teresa have sought refuge in the Winnebago, okay, where they discuss tonight's ordeal with Phil and Mark. It was weird down there. Wasn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you had some different experiences, didn't you? Yeah, I thought there was somebody over in the corner down where the stairwell was, and I felt that someone was actually staring at me. So I must admit, I was quite pleased to get out of there. It wasn't comfortable, it wasn't fun, mm. it wasn't interesting. It was just hard work. Well, I think I've been down here now about 15 minutes, uh, and I have to say that I've not experienced anything at all. I've heard the odd slight noise, but in a house 250 years old, I think you expect it to make the odd slight noise. Satisfied that there is no ghost, Chris leaves. After hearing so many noises from the sealed-off room, Mark is keen to see if the Buddha or horse brass have moved. OK, we've not actually had any movement with these objects at all, which is kind of strange when you, you consider himself a mere we believe we've heard movement from this room. It doesn't appear that anything's actually happened. The equipment has shown nothing out of the ordinary, but it has been an eventful evening. The family have no doubt that there's been plenty of paranormal activity. It's 11 a.m. on the morning after the vigil. After some sleep, everyone reflects on the events of last night. Well, we had a very interesting night last night. It did make me panic, and I'm sorry that I made you jump as oh, well. It was so black, you know. It really was. It's very was. hard to put into words how dark. But it was. It was just absolutely pitch black And I had this there. very strange sensation that if I wasn't holding onto either the well or touching the wall, I had no sense of where Direction. the stairs were, where the wall yeah. was, and I suddenly found myself quickly grabbing out to, to try and get my, my bearings yeah. back. 
It was very weird. It was quite scary down there, definitely. As always, it was quite interesting. We had an uh, interesting mix of weird experiences from some people, all of which were subjective. We also had one or two kind of more objective things. People could hear sounds and so on and so forth. But my own feeling was that in an old house like this, you expect to get those kind of sounds at night. So I wasn't convinced there was anything paranormal going on. I actually felt very apprehensive about going into the cellar. Um, just from the walk around, I didn't want to go down there. Um, and whether or not you believe in spirit or not, I actually felt that was justified during the vigil yesterday evening. Um, obviously, we had a lot of audio noise down there. We also had, or I believe I had a physical touch onto the ribs, which is a bit of a shock. After a gruelling vigil, our investigators reached differing conclusions. Most of the night's events were centred on the cellar, where both Mia and Mark claim they were physically touched by a ghost. Mia also says that she felt someone or something breathe on her. She says she's now more determined than ever to confront the ghost that the Hassets believe is threatening them. Teresa was so scared by the sudden bang that she heard in the cellar that she ran away. And after seeing her reaction, Mia believes she has to act swiftly. Such an active ghost, she says, has to be got rid of. Well, Dr Chris French went down to the cellar too, and he remains severely sceptical about the whole event. For hundreds of years, people who've believed their home is possessed or haunted have turned for help to a parish priest, a witch or a medium to get rid of their unwanted guest. Well, that's a power that Mia claims to have. She says she can help get rid of the ghost that the Hassets claim is targeting their home. She's going to use a clearing ceremony, and that's something she doesn't undertake lightly. Tonight, she says she's going to work with her spirit guide to unlock the door to the other side. Mia, Phil and Teresa brave to enter the cellar, which has been chosen as the location for the clearing. Whatever happens, you're safe. And it will all be finished before we leave here. OK, let's do it now. I'm going up the stairs of the cellar. There's nothing up in the kitchen. Turning around to go through the living room. Where is it? I can't find it yet. Coming back down. Into the cellar. It's coming through the cellar. It's a man, and he's got a, um, a, a, a cowl, like a cloak, covering his head. Okay, he's starting to raise his face. cheekbones. He's got hollows. And he's got brown eyes and they're glazed, slightly glazed. It's like a soldier, like a or a policeman or a, but neither of those fit. It's way back 18, 1820, 1825 time. And I'm seeing this cellar longer and I'm seeing chains on the wall as if there's um, rings hammered into the wall that you could chain things up to, but I'm not sure what. Now this used to be a pub, but this also held money here. But it's like a big, a big old iron box, coffer box, iron box, with money, to do with money. Mia makes a significant revelation. People were chained in here. People were chained up. And it's like they're held here before being moved on. And then something, something's happened. And they've got the people that are here, these are men, have been killed. Been killed in here for the money that was in the box. They were his responsibility, the people that, that got killed. And he tried to get help, and he couldn't get the help. They killed everybody else before they killed him. <laughs> he should never have tied them up. He should never have, he should never have tied them up. <laughs> I'm gonna have to send him over. 
After a few minutes in a trance, Mia says a prayer for the dead. Quipte propitatio est, et propter ligiam tuam, sustenui in domini. In domini. Ex omnibus. In equitibus. Ichus. chest. I nearly couldn't feel it. It's the first time it's ever happened to me. So it's gone now. It's gone. It's gone. When Mia recovers, the three try to make sense of what happened in the clearing. Did you feel anything as it was going on? I just felt very cold. Cold? Yes. Did you my, feel legs are my legs are frozen. This is a terrific draft when you first started speaking Latin. The clearing is complete. Only time will tell if the family's troubles are over. The clearing is an intense experience for Mia and for the family too. Now, Mia tells us that she contacted the ghost during the ceremony and found out that he was an official in charge of transporting a group of prisoners. She says that he and they were all murdered in the house. Now, we couldn't verify that story. But the Hassets told us that their home is a former coaching inn that would have regularly put up groups of travellers. For years, the Hassets think they've lived with uninvited spirits and claim they've suffered unexplained accidents. If it had hit it on the head, it would have killed him. There's no doubt about it. It's got to the point now where these things are happening more and more and more. What else will it do in the future? The next thing could be quite serious. The arrival of our experts revealed how real the threat seemed to Teresa and Phil. <laughs> now it's time to find out if Mia's clearing has had an effect. It's been two months since the clearing, and Mia has returned to the Hassets to see how they're getting on in their home. The atmosphere's completely changed. It now feels very, very light, very open. The house is actually much more pleasant than it used to be before, but it's not an oppressive atmosphere. They believe they no longer share their house with a menacing presence. I feel fairly confident that any bad presence or spirit or whatever it happens to be has gone. It is an easier place to live for me because nothing's popping up in the dark to say hello to me anymore. That's the main thing. Teresa is still learning to adjust to their new home. I still wake up during the night anyway, and I check to see if it's there. I, it's, a, it's a habit that will take a long time for me to go. Pippa feels relieved that she no longer has to worry about her parents. I'd say a big thank you to Mia for, for what she's done for the parents. I'm certainly pleased that it's now gone, and at least now they can start with a fresh, clean slate and just carry on life as normal now. This experience has had a positive effect on Phil and Teresa's life. I'm probably a lot less sceptical than I was, and I've got more of an open mind now, which can't be a bad thing. So, yeah, it's been a good experience. We've lived with it for so long, and it's been part of our life for so long, that it will be very strange not having it here. So, it, yes, it is like a new start. A new era has dawned on the Hassett household. The Hassets say the ghost is now gone and Teresa no longer has to worry about her husband's safety. For them, the experience of living with a ghost for 20 years is over, but they remain convinced that during those years, the spirit became ever more intent on making their life a living hell. Like the Hassets, one in four of us say that if we lived in a haunted home, we'd put the spectre through the same sort of clearing ritual. Haunted homes, it seems, aren't just the product of movie scriptwriters. Perhaps tonight's evidence suggests that it could be happening right next door to you. Sleep well. Good night.